This is sand under a microscope. But so is this. And this. And this. Sand isn't one thing. It's incredibly diverse. And all its differences have global significance. We're on a sand scavenger hunt. We're collecting samples, and we're going to send them to Cory in New York to look at under a microscope. And we're doing all this because sand is actually one of the most critical natural resources there is. It has a million different uses, but it's a crucial component of concrete. And humans use more concrete than any other material besides water. It's fueling these huge construction booms in places like India, China, and parts of the US. And you might have seen news about the world running out of sand. That's true, but it's not that simple. The future of construction actually depends on the science of each tiny little grain of sand. First off, the definition of sand is really broad. It can be made out of any kind of rock or mineral. Really, what makes sand sand is size. Each grain is somewhere between 0.05 millimeters and 2 millimeters across. Smaller than that, and it's silt. Larger, and it's gravel. That's kind of it. But what sand is made out of, where it's from, what it's shaped like, all of that is important if you want to build with it. The basic recipe for concrete is pretty simple. Sand and other large rocks get mixed together with water and cement, which is a powdered binding agent commonly made from limestones and clays. The cement solidifies with the sand and rock particles to form concrete. And what you really want for concrete is river sand. The grains are rounded and their size is consistent. That helps the sand bind with the cement. It's also made of a nice hard mineral like quartz without too many softer minerals mixed in. And river sand, really good river sand, ticks all of those boxes because of this incredible journey it goes on. And think about uh, the individual grain of sand that was once on the mountaintop. That's Frank Leith, a geology expert at a sand producing company called Vulcan Materials. Basically, the sand in the Sacramento River here started up to 400 miles away, around the Klamath Mountains of Northern California. Very slowly, over time, little jagged bits of those mountains chipped off by freezing, thawing, rain, wind. Fell down into the, into the canyons and then fell into the rivers. In the rivers themselves, once they're underwater, they're being transported and bouncing against each other, hitting each other millions of times or more and impacting and knocking all the corners off of that angular grain of, of material that fell down. Along the way, softer minerals are slowly dissolving away. So that after 400 miles, you get this. What, in lots of situations, is the ideal sand for concrete? Of course, river sand ends up somewhere too, the beach. It's maybe the most mature sand that there is because once a river deposits it on the beach, it gets continually worked and reworked by wave action. But beach sand comes with its own issues. It's salty, which can mess with the chemistry of the concrete mix, and it's less pure. There are lots of shells and bits of sea life and who knows what else. That can make the concrete softer or chemically reactive. You can fix both those things, but the concrete might be more expensive or trickier to work with. So that's beach sand. There's one other kind of sand we wanted to compare, manufactured sand, which is basically what it sounds like. Making small rocks out of big rocks. Crushed sand is trickier than natural sand because it doesn't go through that natural weathering process, so it's very sharp and angular. But unlike river sand, we don't have to wait for mountains to weather down over millions of years. We can make it ourselves. So we got some of that too. They wouldn't let us film inside the quarry, but they gave us a very large sample. River and manufactured sand are pretty different, but they both solve the other huge driver of sand scarcity. Sand is cheap to produce, but bulky and heavy to ship. Frank says transportation of sand can cost them two to four times more than production. So sand usually stays local. You know, when you see an average dump truck that's driving down the road with material, it's probably not going more than 30 or 50 miles from, its, from the source of where it got its material. 
any farther than that, and it's probably not worth the cost to move it. Rivers are so useful because they cover a lot of ground, and quarries can create sand in lots of places. Both of them allow builders to collect and use sand locally. When you don't have ideal sand nearby, scarcity gets scary. And in the short term, that's what we're running out of sand really means. There just isn't enough sand in the places we need it most. That's where you get these reports of sand mafias in India stealing entire riverbeds to meet massive demand, or some construction projects in Dubai that have resorted to shipping sand in from places like Australia. Dubai is surrounded by desert sand, but it's actually too fine and smooth to work well in concrete. Again, you need the right sand in the right place for the right job. So how'd we do? Well, we sent the samples to Corey, he got them all organized and imaged, and we saw a lot. We called Frank back to get his take. The manufactured sand popped right out. I mean, there's just corners and angles everywhere, which uh, really shows how fresh and young that manufactured sand is relative to the, to the other sands that you sampled. Frank saw a big contrast between the manufactured sample and both the photos of river sand that we sent him. Both of them have a very high concentration of, of rounded quartz grains. It's those smooth quartz grains that work so well in concrete. As to the beach sand, the grains were nice and round, but there were more mystery grains in there too, like this big blue-green one in the middle. One possibility is, is a tourmaline. Uh, it's also found in some of, uh, of your heavy minerals. All in all, we did pretty well. But, of course, it's so much more complicated. In reality, each one of those grains went on its own journey. So even within a single sample collected from one place, there's a whole world of sand represented. Uh, in geology, there's, there's never, a, it's never a perfect story. It's always a, uh, there's always some additional detective work that has to be done. So listen, there's a whole other part of the story we didn't talk about, and that's the environmental impact of doing all of this sand harvesting all around the world. That's real, we just didn't have time to talk about it in this video, but hopefully we'll cover that soon.